The story goes that the emperor ordered all the roosters to be destroyed in the city, which meant no roosters, no chickens, no hens, no eggs, and a lot of quiet mornings. But the population was getting hungry. According to legend, the residents of Nanjing turned to the duck, a humble bird which over time led to the creation of numerous dishes and soon became a cornerstone to the country's cuisine. University delicious and some of my favorites. I'm Julian Richards and I invite you to join us on a culinary journey as we trace the origins of some of the most famous Chinese dishes. And I'm Nathan Fong. This culinary journey begins in Vancouver, home to some of the best Chinese food in the world. Vancouver, the gateway to Asia, a multicultural cosmopolitan city on the Pacific coast. It has one of the largest and oldest Chinatown districts in North America. Through decades of ebbs and flows, this vibrant neighborhood continues to grow and evolve. Chinatown makes a vital contribution to the city's cultural landscape, including what has been called the best Chinese food in the world. We are on our way to one of Chinatown's many markets to meet with renowned local chef Chan Ru Lin a true master of cooking. His skill and artistry shine through his food, never more than in his signature dish, which he will be preparing for us tonight, tea smoked duck. These markets are a great place to find all of the ingredients for my duck preparation. There's so many teas uh, made, grown in China. I wonder why, why do you use Puyu tea? For example, this particular tea I consider to be the best for tea smoked duck. It is beautifully fragrant and the color is terrific. Mm -hmm. And I recognize some of these other ingredients, but what's, what's this and what is it used for? This is cassia, an excellent combination with the tea. The aromatic bark comes from an evergreen tree. It's also very good for your health, said to benefit the lungs and throat. It's good for your lungs. <laughs> and for your tummy. <laughs> <laughs> so we're load them up here. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, thank yeah. you. But now I must get back to the kitchen as I am preparing duck for you tonight. Bye-bye. Thank you. Well, there's so many different ingredients, you know, and Chinese medicine, it's, they go for the holistic method, you know, and everything is very healthy. They seem to consider all the ingredients. I'm so excited for this dish. I've never had duck prepared this way. Well, you're going to really enjoy it. So let's explore Chinatown some more. Yeah, let's do it. Fortunately for me, Nathan knows Chinatown like the back of his hand. When hunting for duck, he knows a place that has been butchering meat for 35 years. Nice Hello, to meet you. Nice Hello. to meet you. We're trying to find out some of the secrets behind the Nanjing duck. Okay. And I hear there's a lot of preparation involved. Of course there is. Uh, you know, it takes five days to dry, but then prior to the five days, we'll actually have to get to the process of making it. And this is the duck up here? And this is the duck up here. We have approximately 40 hanging. Oh, wow. Yeah. Why are they flattened? Because in the old days, you know, that's how they would transfer them. All these ducks in a cart, you can get more. You can get hundreds of ducks in a little off-drawn cart. Layers of duck that that's you can right. pass out. I guess it makes sense, right? Well, there's so much more to see in Chinatown, so let's go down the street. I'm going to show you some more. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. duck, herbs, spices, an appetite, and a gracious host with a table for two. We are on our way to Sen Chinese Bistro, Chef Zan's new restaurant. I'm looking forward to the meal, but first we will try and extract the secrets of cooking duck in the restaurant kitchen. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 Thank you for having us. Is this our dinner? Yeah. <laughs> it's all these different ingredients just for one dish. That's right, I use all of these ingredients in preparing my tea smoked duck. What's in the salt right now? It is a blend of salt and pepper. I stir fry it in the wok and then blanket it over the duck. 
So these are, a lot of them are flavoring agents and then the tea and the cassia helps to smoke it? Yes, these are the ingredients used in the smoking process. So what do you have to do now? Just put all, make the tea and put the duck in? For the duck I first use a steamer, then it goes into a wok, and then it is smoked. And how long do you marinate with the Szechuan peppercorns and the salt? After we coat the duck, I add in some wine as a marinade. The salting and marinating takes two days. Wow, a drunk duck. He's <laughs> <laughs> got wine and tea and so many of these different herbs and spices. Is that your own special recipe for this duck? While I use a very traditional cooking method, I have experimented with the ingredients. I have added in my own ideas to make it my personal recipe. Oh, I can't wait. Wonderful. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mm, it looks and smells amazing. I can't wait to taste it. So how do we eat it? Well, traditionally you have a, a bun with it. You know, like Peking duck, you have the crepes and then a little duck sandwich. A little duck hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it? Yeah. Straight in? The smokiness is really subtle. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, I think, really important because if it's too smoky, it takes away the flavor. But you should have that nice blend of all the aromatics like the cinnamon and the tea. So many flavors in the, there. Um, and even though it's subtle, it feels very like, very flavorful in my mouth. And it's not overcooked too, because you know, you have that nice pickiness. You want to keep it nice and moist too. Mm -hmm. It's, um, but it's not juicy. Like it's not dripping with juice. It's more of um, a dry moist. Yeah, yeah. dry moist. <laughs> That's a good term for it. Um, and so why eat it with the bun? It's a traditional accompaniment, especially coming from the north. There's a lot of wheat. Whereas down in the south, it would be more you know, rice base. So this is um, uh, the wheat base. I actually prefer duck than chicken. You know, <laughs> so you know that legend. You know, talking about the, I I would have been the emperor because I love the duck. <laughs> I would have got rid of the chicken ages ago. <laughs> <laughs> do you think it's true though, or do you think? I mean, people must have been eating duck before this legend happened. I mean, they didn't need to just get rid of roosters to well, try with, it. With a lot of cultures, you know, legends, there's always some myth or, you know, whether it's an urban myth, but there's some fact usually. But, but we'll have to find out. A way of explaining the world, I guess. I think we should find out. We should go to the source. Yes, that's a good idea. <laughs> Anything for a good meal, right? <laughs> with duck. Okay. And so, in search of a legend and a humble bird, we migrate. With a recorded history dating back 4,000 years, China is one of the oldest civilizations in the world. By land, air, and ridiculously fast bullet train, we head for Nanjing, a vibrant city of 8 million located in the Jiangsu province of eastern China. The city has a prominent place in the country's history and culture, and has served as a capital many times. If legend proves correct, this is the birthplace of duck as food. If this is our pilgrimage, then our first stop has to be the mausoleum of Sun Yat-sen, considered a holy site by the Chinese people. I can't think of a better place to start our trip to Nanjing than here. As with the gardens in Vancouver, these were built as a tribute to Dr. Sun Yat-sen. He traveled to Vancouver on numerous occasions to help elicit support for the revolution that he was part of. This mausoleum, finished in 1929, is built at the base of the Purple Mountain. Certainly one of our favorite colors. <laughs> and I hear once we get through the gates, there's a lot of steps to climb. 392 of them. We better get started. Let's go. 
The next step is back in time, 650 years, to the construction of the largest city wall in China, Zhu Yuanzhan, the Hanwu Emperor, and possible suspect in the Great Rooster Elimination, began construction of the wall around Nanjing in 1368. We are at the Zhonghua Gate, which housed thousands of soldiers whose sole purpose was to protect the city. This tunnel is one of the dozens in the fortress that served as their home. Not much of a view for them, and a little too claustrophobic for me. <laughs> okay, okay, that's enough. Let's walk the rest of the way. Wow, you really have a view up here, hey? It's beautiful. Revolutionary in its design and scope, the wall itself was constructed in a winding freestyle that used the area's natural topography as a guide. The beauty and serenity is breathtaking. But still, I don't think I'm ready to ride on these cobblestones for the entire 33 kilometers. Calories preemptively burned, it's time to head back to the city to seek out our next culinary delight. The Hunan Road District is chaotic and bright and bustling with energy. By now I am really hungry, and luckily Nathan has a plan. You're going to be surprised because there's really nothing like this in North America. Well, good timing because I am starving. Okay, let's go in. Okay. You know, this restaurant is so unique, you know, you look at inside, it's like an old courtyard, and this is like old food stalls, you know? Family style, country style, and look at the flat ducks. We saw hey, this in Vancouver. I know this. You know? That's right, the same way. Hey, a So let, let's pick some food here. I must admit, this is all a bit overwhelming to me. This restaurant is just wild. Uh, what is this? This is a Chinese donut. A donut. It's a, like a cruller, but it's not sweet. It's savory. I love chicken's feet and pig's intestine. Oh, oh come on. Nice. We have sounds, to try sounds, it. Sounds very exciting. Is it spicy? Hmm. Pig's intestines? I think I'd better work my way up to this. How about freshwater lake crawfish? That can't be bad. Here. I would. Here. There you go. Okay. I don't need that little piece. All right. No. Okay. Just put it in your mouth. No. Yes. No. It's not my favorite. But you know what? I've got something for you that you will definitely like. This is the Nanjing beer. It's the local beer. Thankfully, I found some common cultural ground. Like Canadians, the Chinese love beer. The taste of home. A new day and more steps to take. This time, our path is the sacred way, an ornate road built in honor of our old friend, Emperor Zhu Huanzhen, builder of walls, eater of duck, and early symbol of China's power. Symbolism plays an important part in Chinese food culture. For example, noodles means longevity or long life. You should never cut your noodle when you're eating them. It, it represents shortening or cutting up your life. And also fish, certainly one of my favorites. They swim in schools, which means plentifulness and prosperity for the coming year. Also, our hero, the duck, that represents fidelity and companionship. And that's one of the reasons why it's always served at wedding banquets. These statues seem to be a lot more exotic than the fish and the duck. I wonder what they symbolize. Well, they represent the first six courses that we're going to have at tonight's dinner, starting with the camels back there. <laughs> it's our, our three-dimensional menu, right? That's for sure. <laughs> Seriously, I'd love to know more, though. Well, I know someone who's an expert in this field, so let's go meet him. We needed someone who could shine a light on the legend of the dead roosters and help us understand the local fascination with duck. Wu Xiaoping, host of the popular program Talking of Nanjing, 
has carved out a 30-year career as a journalist and writer and is undeniably a celebrity in these parts. So Mr. Wu, many people outside of China have heard of Shanghai and Beijing, but not so many have heard of Nanjing. Can you tell us a little bit about this, its significance in Chinese history? Nanjing is a very old city with a great history. Over the years it has been the capital city for ten dynasties and is well known as such. That's a long time. Jilly and I came to Nanjing because we heard about this famous rooster legend that this emperor had all the roosters destroyed, which led to the eating of all this duck. Is it true? Nanjing is also known as the duck city, as we eat more duck here than anywhere else. Even the well-known Beijing duck can be considered a new generation of Nanjing duck, so there is a long history of duck in Nanjing. But the legend of killing roosters is not true. It's disappointing that such a fantastic story isn't true. And while that might be the end of the legend, it's certainly not the end of our journey. For all this talk of duck, I haven't seen any yet. Where are they? It's time for another road trip. This time we head south to a duck farm in the Li Soye district, about 100 kilometers outside of Nanjing. The farm isn't at all what I expected. It's wide open, resting on lakes and canals. The ducks essentially roam as they please. They are free pick fed. They see something they like, they eat it. Kind of like me on this trip. So Farmer Song, uh, most of these ducks are for the restaurants in Nanjing. How many ducks do you raise every year? We typically start the year with 2,500 ducks. Every year this 2,500 will grow to 20 to 30,000 birds. How do they get them from the farm to the market? Well, they herd them with a bamboo stick. I've done it, so I think we should do it because I'd like to herd you with a bamboo <laughs> stick. Let's get going. <laughs> Sounds like an adventure. <laughs> In case you were wondering, because I sure was, unlike their Canadian counterparts, Chinese ducks don't fly. Come on, Nathan! Come on, little duck! Come on! We could chase these flocks around all day. But like them, it is time for us to head to market. Back in Nanjing, the Confucius Temple area definitely has its focus more on the commercial than the spiritual. The markets in China have to be experienced. Bustling with life, they are a staple for locals and tourists alike. Food stalls abound, and the shops sell just about everything. Nathan is taking me to one of the local stores. This might be a good time to pick up some souvenirs. This is the store I wanted to show you. Well, this store is really interesting. It's all about duck, duck parts. Everything here? Well, here we have duck feet here. Hmm. You know, they're the webs. You know, the web yes. duck feet. And then we have duck wings here. All vacuum sealed. All vacuum sealed. What's this? Duck tongue? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, the Chinese, they eat everything. You know, every part whatsoever. They don't want, they don't waste. Nothing goes to waste. So, guess what this is? Um, it looks like maybe a spine? You're close, but it's duck neck. Duck neck. It looks longer than on a duck. Well, looking at the neck makes me hungry, so <laughs> let's go to the restaurant. <laughs> okay. We have seen farms and markets, but the best is yet to come. The highlight of our trip, Nanjing duck prepared by a master. Restaurant Ma Tianxin opened in 1845 and is one of the very best in the city. Chef Wu Chunlin was born to cook, coming from a long line of chefs, some of whom cooked for emperors. If anyone can teach us about preparing Nanjing duck, he is the man. This is the salting room, obviously very important in the making of salted duck. We use stir-fried salt to cover the entire duck for four hours. To maximize the flavor and texture, we then soak the duck in a brine for two hours. When done, they hang here to dry. This ensures that the color is good after cooking. Well, we should go to the kitchen and watch it get cooked. Okay. Yeah. When the water is boiled, we add onion and anise seed into the wok. 
The duck goes in, head down, and boils for 20 minutes. Then it comes out, the water has to be changed, and the duck boils again for another 20 minutes. After that, we have salted duck. That's it? That's all? Well, these techniques have a history that dates back hundreds of years. This is the most traditional method of preparing the famous Nanjing salted duck. We head for the dining room to let the master work his magic. I'm so surprised that was so simple. I really thought it would be more elaborate. Well, the cooking techniques are really simple, but it, I think it's the aromatics, the, the ingredients. Mm. There was ginger, there was green onions, mm. star anise. You know, all those ingredients are really important. You know, and there's special ingredients, I'm sure, that Secret we never ones. saw. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the duck's here. Xie xie. <laughs> here, I'll give you a piece here. Thanks. They uh, debone it as well. And it looks so different than the duck we had at the San Bistro in Vancouver. Look like the color. Well, it's a completely different cooking technique. The other one was deep fried and smoked. This one, you know, it's poached, brined, salted, hung. I love this. This tastes really good. It almost reminds me of um, like cold roast beef or something. So flavorful, but you can taste the fattiness. Mm -hmm. And so traditionally, it's always served cold or at room temperature. But there's so many other duck mm. um, recipes regional throughout, like in Guangzhou in the south. One of my favorites is um, deboned duck, and it's deep fried and stuffed with glutinous rice. And then the famous Beijing duck, which is oh, a whole different recipe in itself, which I think we'll have to go to Beijing to find out about that one. This is fantastic, um, but I am excited to try all the other ducks out there. Oh, for sure. Cheers for this one. Tempeh. We're taking the last few steps of our stroll through Nanjing before we have to go home to Vancouver. We came looking for the traditional, and we found it, and so much more. We discovered the soul of a city so rich in history and culture, beautifully expressed through its cuisine. As we found out in Nanjing, the legend of the dead roosters wasn't true. But what we do know for sure is that the area helped introduce duck to the plates of the world. And we're so happy they did, because the taste is truly legendary. And speaking about legends, did you hear the one about the military leader that lopped off 50 heads into the raging waters to appease the spirit gods? Well, he single-handedly created a new dish, which is pretty well found culturally throughout the world. This sounds interesting. Show me more. Let's go.